2023 Sunbelt Headlines, Part 3. You are Locked On Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome back to another edition of Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. I am your host, Dave Schultz. We've done six Sunbelt teams so far, what their headlines could be heading into the 2023 season. We got three more tonight and then two more for next week, and then maybe the overall headlines for uh, the Sunbelt in 2023. So tonight, we will do Southern Miss, ULM, and ODU. Let's start off with the fighting Will Halls, the former offensive coordinator at uh, Louisiana and then offensive coordinator at, coordinator at Tulane, now heading into year three with his uh, Golden Eagles. And obviously the first headline is going to be consistency at the quarterback play. Or maybe just who, who is the quarterback? <laughs> uh, and so they were in and out. And kind of turned the ball over a bunch last year. And it does not appear last year's player, uh, last year's quarterback, Wilkie, is going to be the guy. It's going to either be Billy Wiles out of Clemson or Holman Edwards out of Houston. And they're coming off a high, right? They're coming off a win uh, in the Mobile Bowl, I guess the Lending Tree Bowl, it was formerly the Lending Tree Bowl, but that's what they played in, in Mobile. Uh, and uh, they got Frank Gore Jr. coming back. We'll get to that here in a second. But they're all, they're on a high, all right? They are in the tougher division right now, at least at the top. They got to overcome the defending champs, Troy. They have to overcome who I think is going to be the favorite, South Alabama. We'll see if they can take advantage of uh, the Cajuns' issues at quarterback. Uh, but it is a very, very tough division. And, you know, at least one game last year. I mean, they had some crazy games last year uh, coming from behind. And one, a couple of those come from ahead victories. Uh, shootouts, uh, a lot of scoring in the fourth quarter, but then they lost at Coastal in a game that Grayson McCall did not play. So give credit to Coastal, but maybe that's a game that they should have won. They got off to an awful start against uh, the Cajuns, throwing an interception on, I think, the first play of the game, but they ended up winning that ball game, holding the Cajuns off uh, late in the fourth quarter. So they need better quarterback play, and if they can do that because they got a good running game, and they got a good defense, that's what they need. I don't even know if they need – they just need, like, slightly above average quarterback play. Like, South Alabama, well, I mean, they're really good. But Carter Bradley should be above average, right, for comparison's sake. They're going to be counting on South Alabama's Carter Bradley to lead them to victory. The defense is good. The offensive line is good. And Ladanian Webb is good. But they need – in South Alabama's case, they need – the quarterback to lead here. They need the quarterback to not make the mistakes. They need the quarterback to put them in a good spot to win the football games and cut down on those mistakes. So the first headline will be consistency at quarterback. All right. And then it's basically how far can Frank Gore take them? Frank Gore Jr. Excuse me. So how far can running back Frank Gore Jr. Take the golden Eagles. Uh, He has been Mr. Everything, right? I think they call him Superback over there in Hattiesburg. You know, a few years ago, due to COVID and injuries, they did not have a quarterback. Frank Gore Jr. raised his hand. I'll do it. And didn't lead him to one win, led him to two wins. (laughs) And uh, does it willingly. And obviously, they still use some of that in the offense, that he will be the wildcat, so to speak, every once in a while you know, throw the other team off, just keep them honest, whatever the case may be. Uh, But he is Mr. Everything. And in a conference that is full of really good running backs, he may be the best. And so it was a big deal that he came back, right? I got to believe that someone probably reached out NIL wise. Now he technically doesn't need the money, right? I mean, Frank Gore played a long time in the NFL. So a couple of bucks to Frank Gore Jr. may not be as enticing as it is to some other families who may be in need, right? And that's fair. Uh, But nonetheless, 
when you want to, I don't want about getting outside of your father's shadow, but if you want to do it on your own and someone is off, offering you $50,000 or $75,000 or $100,000, whatever it may be, or more, uh, you may want to do it. Frank Gore Jr. decided to come back. So how far can Frank Gore Jr. take the Golden Eagles? Because a lot, like basically, with Carter Bradley at South Alabama, it's Frank Gore Jr. He's going to be the offense, and at least to begin with. And, you know, all the teams are going to stack the line, probably going to stack the box, right? And he's going to have to prove it that he can uh, work around that. All right. Another headline is, you know, Will Hall, year three, lifting expectations. He's done a good job of building and rebuilding a program that kind of went downhill fast. Like, it would have been, let's see, 18, 19, 20, 21. All right. So it would have been 16, I think, off the top of my head, that the Golden Eagles beat the Cajuns in the New Orleans Bowl. And it was downhill after that, right? Uh, they went in to uh, South Alabama, actually, went into Hattiesburg and kind of embarrassed Southern Miss, and the head coach quit. <laughs> like, whoa. And then now Will Hall has had to pick up the pieces. And they have a... Uh, their stadium still has the rock as it's affectionately known, right? Has new boxes on one side of the end zone and offices on the other side, maybe got to fix up the middle a little bit, kind of like what the Cajuns are doing. Uh, not a complete rebuild, but got to improve maybe a little bit there. Uh, but he's gotten more. And again, we've talked about this throughout with Southern Miss is Southern Miss has their own little fan base. All right. They, they are separate from the Ole Miss and the Mississippi State uh, fans. They, they love their Golden Eagles, which I can appreciate. Uh, and Will Hall has tapped into that, right? He is Mississippi through and a through. So can he take it to the next? Can they take it to that next level, you know, where we're winning, you know, eight, nine, or 10 ball games? Can we do a quick schedule? Let's do a quick schedule on, on Southern Miss just to see what that might be because again it's going to be really hard southern miss schedule let's see if that comes up football wise all right so we'll see what they finished last year really quickly if the computer work all right so they finished seven and six but that includes a win uh in the bowl game against rice all right so let's see what we got here to begin uh, the 2023 season. All right, they they got Alcorn State. I think that they just see that they lost to Alcorn State. Oh, no, it was Liberty in four overtimes. That's a tough way to lose. All right, so they got Alcorn State. Then they get Florida State. Ouch. Then you get Tulane at home. Be nice to start off two and one, but that Tulane game, they're going to have, you know, revenge on them. You get Arkansas State on the road. That's not going to be easy because it's on the road. You get Texas State at home. Old Dominion got to win. South Alabama is going to be tough. App State in Boone is going to be hard. You got ULM coming to Hattiesburg. The Cajuns in Lafayette and Mississippi State. Troy is at home. Oh, my goodness. I mean, <laughs> the out-of-conference schedule is Florida State, Tulane, and Mississippi State. Stay hot. Whew. They could actually, that's one of those things that they could actually be better and not have as good as record. So, all right, we'll just give them Elkhorn State, Tulane, Arkansas State is three, Texas State is four, Old Dominion is five, ULM is six, maybe the Cajuns is seven, Troy is eight. That may be pushing it. So that's what I'm telling you. They could be better than last year, and they're going to have to, you know, win some games that they may not be favored in. Well, they may be favored against Arkansas State, all right? Uh, but that is not an easy schedule by any stretch of the imagination for uh, Southern Miss. So we'll see how they do. Uh, again, it's going to be Frank Gore Jr., and the quarterback has to has to not get in the way that had been uh, like they had in uh, previous years. Okay, let's do ULM when we come back. Terry Bowden, 
also in year three uh, at the helm uh, at uh, for the Warhawks. But let me tell you about a little eBay Motors. How about eBay Motors? Really excited about them becoming a sponsor for a championship team. It's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to My Garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. All right, Dave Schultz back on Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. We're doing 2023 Sunbelt Headlines Part 3, and we got Terry Bowden, Year 3 at ULM, Warhawks, hardest job in D1. They have one of the smaller budgets in college football. Uh, He's got some here uh, serious headwinds to overcome. They do have new leadership. That Maybe that should be part of it. John Hartwell New leadership at ULM. That's a good headline. Uh, The former Utah State uh, AD and uh, Alabama native. I think Mobile, Alabama native, in fact. uh, Wanted the Auburn job. Didn't get that one, but he wanted to come back down south. So as challenging as the Auburn gig is, the ULM gig is uh, exponentially more challenging. And already, John has done a good job. He's got a a home-and-home schedule with La Tech. From what I read, nobody thought that would ever happen, uh, and that will be coming up uh, down the road. So it is a challenging job. Uh, you are, uh, you have lesser facilities than others. You have lesser money than others. And the Sun Belt, it's not only the teams in the Sun Belt, like South Alabama who have come around, and Troy who has now come around, but the teams that you're adding, right? Marshall, Southern Miss. James Madison, and now you're competing uh, with them uh, as well. So it is it is a really tough job, and I thought that they were headed in the right direction. Not only were they uh, competing, but they were winning, and Chandler Rogers, the QB, pulled the rug out from under him and ended up at North Texas. I, I, I hope he got some NIL money uh, to go to North Texas. That would make it worth it uh, because it just seemed like they were going in the right direction he was a big part of it. He was really, Chandler Rogers was really good. Uh, South Alabama had all kinds of issues trying to slow them down. They eked out a victory over the Warhawks. Um, in fact, two years ago, they, they, they didn't. They lost a couple of years ago uh, to ULM, but they did beat them last year uh, only because, you know, they were just a little bit better uh, than uh, ULM. So they need to start building something. And it, it's knowing it, right? It, I mean, it, there's no sugarcoating it. When he got, got the job, it was a hard job. When John Hartwell is coming in, he probably also told him it's a hard job. So there may not be the impetus to move on if things don't go as quickly as possible because it is a tough job. Uh, And uh, it appears that Terry Bowden is the right man for the job. We shall uh, see. But now headline number two, or maybe already three, you know, uh, Jaya Wright taking over for Rodgers. So you have a new quarterback, Jaya Wright, who's been there. He was in the competition last year. He did transfer in, I believe, from Northern Illinois a few years ago. But he's the guy. He, they're even bringing him to some Bell Media Days. So they don't have a lot of quarterbacks coming in that that didn't play the previous year. So, like, Cam Bancher's coming in, I think, and uh, Carter Bradley is uh, coming in. But there's some other schools that are not bringing their quarterbacks. Like, I don't think Southern Miss is bringing their quarterback. So it's good to see that they're going with this guy, Uh, that they've already made that decision, at least heading into the fall. I guess you can, someone can play their way in and someone can play their way out. Uh, But it does appear that Jaya Wright is going to be that guy. And I think when you're a ULM and you can rally around the quarterback, we know going into the season, that's the guy. Like the Cajuns don't have a guy. I don't know if the Cajuns know who the guy is. They may be waiting for Ben Waldridge to get better. He may be ready to go. We'll see. 
If Wooldridge is ready to go, okay. But if you got to pick between the young kids, Zeon Chris, and the experience of Chandler Fields, which direction you're going in? ULM seems to know what direction they're going in, and that's got to be uplifting for the team because it's going to it's going forward uh, from uh, the get go. So it's none of this. We're splitting reps, nothing like that. It appears. All right. So that is a good headline for uh, ULM, and uh, let's move on. All right. So now let's do. Oh, well, we did a few headlines, right? Year three, uh, toughest job in D1, and Jaya Wright taking over for Chandler Rogers. All right, when we come back, we will do ODU. And just like in uh, the West with G.J. Kinney's high-powered offense, Ricky Ronnie trying to do the same in uh, the East. And we'll talk about that right after this on Locked on Sunbelt. All right, the schedule, the, uh, the channel is continuing to grow. All right, we're at 335 uh, subscribers. Uh, and I think hopefully the Sunbelt Media Days will help us out. Oh, these a uh, few episodes seem to have helped us out as well. Views aren't as much, but the subscribers keep on coming. And you can tell that people are still are, are just catching on and just finding it. And because of the people who have already been subscribing. So I appreciate that uh, from the bottom of my heart. And again, I think we have a shot at getting to the 500 subscriber rate when uh, we open up the season. So hopefully we can line up some coaches. Probably not Clay Helton. We already did that one. You can go back and look. We just did Clay Helton. So maybe maybe we get Clay Helton at the end of camp heading into the season. Maybe we get him then uh, because we already had Clay Helton. But that's the plan to see if we get as many coaches as we can to preview their season and just build up momentum as we continue to do so on uh, Locked on Sunbelt. Don't forget to uh, subscribe if you see it on YouTube and please like it and share it you see it on you know, social media, do the same. Also, don't forget, you can get it wherever you get your audio. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon, iHeart. Wherever you get your podcast, your audio podcast, you can find Locked on Sunbelt. Uh, also, if you leave a comment on YouTube, it's me. It's just, it's just me. I am the one uh, replying, although just say Locked on Sunbelt. That's what it, it's in that, under that uh, title on YouTube. So again, thank you so much for supporting uh, the channel. We'll continue to do uh, more and we're looking forward to really our first full football season doing video. We started the audio last mid December and still a little shaky. We didn't do video until December and we're really looking forward uh, to doing it this year. So again, thank you so much for all of your support. All right, let's uh, wrap it up with that 2023 Sunbelt Headlines Part 3, it is time for ODU, all right? They come in on, is it a nine-game losing streak? They had a huge win against Coastal Carolina and have not won since. They ran all over Coastal Carolina. Uh, they actually gave South Alabama a tough battle at the end. They are three and nine. Their last win is October 15th, last year. Uh, they beat Coastal Carolina 49 21. So one, two, three, four, five, six in a row. Uh, they battled against South Alabama, I will say that, 27 to 20. Uh, but they have not won a ball game uh, since and really kind of took it on the chin. They lost a close ball game to Georgia Southern, two scores to Georgia State, shut out against Marshall, blown out against James Madison, doubled up basically by App State and hung around against South Alabama. And the Jaguars ended up uh, eking one out by uh, seven points. So headline number one, what does ODU do to turn it around? Well, that's easy. They bring in a new offense. And just like G.J. Kinney in Texas State, they went out and got a high-powered offensive coordinator, uh, although Texas State, uh, that is G.J. Kinney. They went out and got Kevin Decker, the Fordham offensive coordinator, 609 yards per game, first in FCS, 49.5 points per game, second in FCS. He also brought with him Grant Wilson, who was sitting on the bench, knows the Fordham offense. That prompted Hayden Wolf to transfer out. He was the previous quarterback uh, for ODU. So they're going all in on this offense. 
Can they make a move? All right. So the good news is Kevin Decker in. Grant Wilson in. The bad news, running back Blake Watson out and wide receiver Allie Jennings out. You got to replace some key contributors. Watson, the running back, and Jennings, uh, the wide receiver. So there is hope. I think if you can have a little bit of patience, a little bit, meaning give them a year, right, to implement the offense and get the guys to come in. I think I only saw on 24-7 they got like six transfers in. That's not a whole lot. Uh, But also with these things, here I'm also a big believer. If you're going to lose, all right, and – ODU and Texas State are not picked to win a whole lot this year. You can't be boring. All right. No one wants to see you lose 17 to 10. That's not fun. Uh, losing 45 38 is fun. Everyone's going to say, boy, if you could just play a little defense, but everyone wants to see points. That's the way football is, is going towards and, or is there actually, right? And, that's what they want. If, you, if they can put up some points on the board, they will have patience. If you're getting blown out, then nobody's going to have patience for that. So uh, I do think uh, they are heading in the right direction. Those are the two, to me, those are the two most interesting teams. Texas State, which we will do in a couple of days. And uh, Texas State and... Uh, ODU. Those are the two most fascinating teams. I think I got a good fit for most of the other teams or feel anyways on what the other teams will do. Obviously, a lot is going to be based on, you know, who the quarterback ends up being. But I I just think I'm not sure what ODU is going to do. I'm not sure what G.J. Kinney and Texas State are going to do. They could be really competitive and scare some people or, you know, they they could be taking it on the chin. Uh, Although I think just like who do we say? Southern Miss? I think ODU has a heck of a schedule as well. Let's see. They they did beat Virginia Tech last year. I mean, they beat Virginia Tech and they beat Coastal Carolina and still lost six straight. How about this starting three set, three game set for ODU? Virginia Tech in Blacksburg. They host the Cajuns and then they host Wake Forest. Okay. I mean, they could, I, I guess ODU fans are going to say they could be two and one, but they very well could be 0 and three. And now all of a sudden you're riding a nine game losing streak. All right. Texas A&M Converse is after, uh, Texas A&M University Converse after that. At Marshall, at Southern Miss, hosting App State, at JMU, Coastal Carolina, at Liberty, at Georgia Southern, and then home versus Georgia State. Who? <laughs> I, I presume they're going to have to surprise a, a couple of people. Uh, you know, the thing is, Jamie Chadwell and Liberty going to have the, uh, you know, the one up on ODU. Uh, how familiar are they are there? So uh, with each other. So it, this is a tough schedule. You know, the Cajuns will, could be in flux. Maybe they take the Cajuns down. All right. Maybe you give Wake a maybe you give Wake a game and you're one and two. Then you beat Texas AM, you're two and two, and now you have a little momentum, but then you're going on the road to Marshall and you're going to go play at Southern Miss. It is not going to be an easy year for ODU, but again, ODU and Texas State are my two wild cards. I just I don't have any idea what either of them are gonna do. All right. Wanna thank you for tuning in. We still I guess I didn't realize we still have five teams to go. So we still have Marshall, App State, JMU. Uh, That will be, I guess, Monday's episode. And we still have Louisiana and Texas State. That'll be next Wednesday's episode. And then we'll see what I do (laughs) when when I do one uh, for Friday. Uh, We're traveling to Nashville for this uh, SEC media days. And then we'll be home for a weekend. And then we're traveling to New Orleans for Sunbelt media days. So we will uh, not leave Locked on Sunbelt behind. We're still very much... Uh, into this. All right. Thank you so much for listening. Continue to subscribe. Continue to tell your fellow Sunbelt fans that we are here and looking forward to uh, the season. I mean, we only got, what do we got? We got July, August. What do we got? 10, 11 weeks. 
Really looking forward to it. All right, once again, I'm your host, Dave Schultz, and you've been watching and listening to Lockdown Sunbelt, your team, every day.